Hello, my thrift flipping loving friends. This is Shelly. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm glad you're here. Today I have a collaboration with five other channels and we're going to show you some flips of things that we last thrifted. So recently I went to Salvation Army and Goodwill and I did a part one and part two videos. I'll have links to that down in the description box if you want to check those out. But I had a few things that I didn't, I just couldn't fit in the, in the videos. So I thought that I would use them in this one since they are the last things that I thrifted. So with this collaboration, there is going to be a playlist and I'm going to have that linked down in the description. You're definitely going to want to go check them out. Uh, all great, super great, creative, inspiring channels. You're definitely going to want to check out what they have in store for you to see. So let's get upcycling, repurposing, and flipping that home decor for profit. I thought I'd show you my recent visit to Goodwill. This is the first project in the wood aisle that I picked up. It's a little storage box, and I really liked it. I like the shape of it. It's a good size, and I thought it would be great for whatever you wanted to use it for. Hats and mittens, fabric for your craft room, a toy box for your kids or grandkids, uh, whatever you could think of. So we're going to make a little primitive little storage box out of this. So I cleaned up the box, took the sticker off. It was $6. And I'm just showing you here. See, it's got a nice, nice, pretty good sized storage compartment in there. So I'm going to take my burgundy paint and I'm going to do two coats of the paint all over this little box. While I was digging around in my stash, I found these really pretty little napkins and they're kind of stained up on certain spots. So I thought what I would do is to uh, cut them in half. I was going to make a little pillow. So I thought I would cut out two good sides to the napkin and without the stains and I ironed them out once I got them cut down. I frayed the edges a little bit so that it would kind of match the top part there but um not it's not complete because those are like knotted i liked the frayed edge there and i went in just a little bit with my hot glue and i just hot glued the two pieces together i went all the way around and left a little spot for my hand to get in so that i could uh, add the stuffing because i'm going to make a little pillow for the seat of this little bench uh, but it also can stand up and be up against the wall too if you didn't want to have to, you know, if you didn't want to sit on it. So I just thought it would be a pretty little addition to the little box and just adding a little bit of hot glue. It's not like it's going to be a high use pillow. It's just decorative and I've used glue a lot on pillows and they last for a really long time. So I really don't have much uh, to complain about with those. So I just used some hot glue. Like I said, left that little spot open to pop in some of my polyfill and stuck that in till I was happy with just a lightly stuffed pillow. And then I took my glue and closed up that little hole where I had it so that I could stick my hand in there and just hot glued that together so my pillow was complete. Once my two coats were completely dry on the little box, I decided to distress it a little bit and took a little bit of sandpaper and went just on the edges, just enough to give it a little bit of an aged look so it didn't look like it was freshly painted. I sealed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer and this piece is done.
This little box with the apple decor on it is not my style, but I really like the little drawer box, the three drawer box. I thought it was super cute and I thought I could make it a little more primitive and just dress it up a little bit more than what it is. So I'm going to take the drawers out and pop off those apples and they were pretty simple to do. They were just glued on. So I just popped those off. The knobs on the drawers had little staples in them, so but it was still very simple to get it off. Took a little sandpaper and sanded it down so that if there was any glue on it, it was uh, gone once I sanded it. And this piece was ready to paint. Now I'm going to give it a coat of black Rust-Oleum Flat Black Spray Paint as a base coat before I put on the next color. Next, I'm going to go in with my, once that's dry, I'm going to go into my Fusion Mustard Paint and give this two coats of the mustard paint. I know this paint doesn't look very primitive, but it will be once I get done with it. So hang in there, stick with me. You're gonna love the ending of this, I'm pretty sure. Now, since I got rid of the apples that were the knobs for the drawers, I had to find new ones. So I had these beads. I have the large ones and the little ones, and I really like the little one. It doesn't take up a lot of room. I'm gonna have something on the front of it, so I don't want it to, uh, take over the whole piece. It's a very small little drawer stack. So I had got these little beads from Dollar Tree. They're in a little loop, like a necklace type thing. And um, I grabbed those to do little projects with them. So I'm going to stick this on a, these on a skewer and I'm going to paint them black. I will distress them and then I'm going to uh, use some antique wax on them once they're dry and then wipe it back so that it just gives it an old aged look. Now I'm going to put the drawer stack back together and make sure everything fits just right. You know, after painting, sometimes things don't always fit correctly and it looks like it fits great. I'm going to go to my transfer from IOD, The Lover of Flowers, it's called. And I think this is on the very first page. It's the poem for To the Lover of Flowers, I believe is what it says. And I'm going to put the poem on the very front over the drawers and so this actually works out really well i don't quite get it on there straight but uh, it's a little bit off but i really don't think it's going to matter it's going to be distressed a little bit um, i'm going to have flowers on there too so it's there's going to be a lot going on so i don't think it really matters all that much um, and it's just really for the aesthetic not really to be able to read the poem I guess not for me anyway but super simple just lined it up where I wanted it got it on there and I kind of moved it and and that's how it got a little bit crooked but so not it's not terrible so I just used my little stick and rubbed it on and went just drawer for drawer now not everything is going to fit on this whole thing it's going to go in between the cracks they are just a little um again it's not really to read, it's just to have the words on the front, and um, you'll, it, it, it'll, you'll see. It'll, it's just, it looks really cool on there. Now I start taking the flowers that went with it and cutting them down and adding them to just randomly, kind of random. Uh, all over the piece. So I'm going to have it go, this one's going to go from the front and then wrap around down around the side. And then I'll have another piece that'll come around and attach to that. Uh, and then I work on the other side and I have a piece of a small flower that comes around and loops up around and it all attaches almost like it's just kind of wrapping all around the little piece. So as you can see here, so I just rub it on and then it goes down over the lip just a little, so I just kind of flatten that out and, and make sure that it is down. 
And um, I think this, these flowers go really pretty with this mustard color. And it works really well. They It went down really well on this paint. It worked so good. So I'm just burnishing the transfers on, making sure that they're on there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper, just lightly sand the transfer. Once all that's sanded and wiped down, I'm taking my antique wax and I'm going to go over the whole piece. I love antique wax on this mustard color. It gives it a nice deep color. It dulls down that brightness and it makes it look more like an antique. I absolutely love this mustard color with the antique wax. And those of you that have watched me for a while know this. Uh, I just can't use this paint <laughs> without using my antique wax. It's just, it, it's a must. It has to go on. And I love the antique look that it gives. So see how bright this is. And then the wax goes on. And it's not a huge, huge difference. But it's enough so that it looks like something that came out of the 1950s and, uh, you know, some little jewelry box that somebody used to have. And I just absolutely love it. Once my wax is all on and I let it dry really well so that my knobs would stick, I used a little bit of E6000 and a little bit of hot glue and I stuck that down. Now I had to make sure that all my little knobs and, and my drawers, because they tended to move, making sure that everything was in line so that my knobs were in line and got those centered in the middle. And I'm glad I went with the small ones. I think it looks so much better. And then once I got all those on there, I did take a little bit of black paint from when I painted the little knobs. Very little paint on my brush, and I just went over the high spots on the uh, on the box, just around the edges, giving it some distress, making giving it an even more aged look, I think, and uh, just very very light, and in not in all the spots, but just here and there. enjoyed my last things thrifted projects today let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite and which one it is i hope this inspires you to grab some of your home decor paint it up it's amazing what just a little bit of paint will do check out that playlist of the last things thrifted everybody's worked so hard to show you what they've done to flip their projects don't forget to like share and subscribe and have a great day